In this video, we're going to be talking about ankylosing spondylitis, a type of seronegative polyarthritis. So, let's look at the definition. It is a seronegative spondyloarthritis. What does seronegative mean, and why does ankylosing spondylitis come under this clause? It simply means that there is no rheumatoid factors present in the blood, and there is also likewise no anti-CCP like in rheumatoid arthritis. So that would mean rheumatoid arthritis is a seropositive type of spondyloarthritis. It's a chronic, chronic inflammatory disease of the sacroiliac joint and the spine. This is a very key important. Ankylosing spondylitis usually affects the sacroiliac joint and the spine, whereas rheumatoid arthritis, on the other hand, which is a seropositive spondyloarthritis, usually affects distal and proximal PIP, MIP, and joints. So basically, joints of the fingers and of the ankles. These guys, i.e. Uh, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, is usually associated with HLA-B27 involvement. So people with genetic factors or predisposed to HLA-B27 can have or increase factor to developing spond ankylosing spondylitis. What are the simple clinical signs and symptoms? Usually patients complain with pain and stiffness, usually in the lumbar spinal region. Remember the definition, it usually affects sacroiliac joints in the spine for more than three months continuously and usually it gets better after exercise but worsens during rest. There is bilateral sacroiliatus, i.e. there is bilateral both sides um, inflammatory process of the inflammation of the sacroiliac joint which would then lead to limited range of motion in the lumbar spine in both the frontal, i.e. movement forward of the, um, of the sacroiliac joint and in the sagittal planes. They usually, commonly, patients usually always complain of nocturnal pain, i.e. pain during resting during the night. It's very typical. So a typical patient would usually complain towards the end of the evening. They would start to complain of increased pain and increased joint pain, contractures, because of ankylosing spondylitis. Now, you can see the image I want you to look at here where the mouse is pointed to. A normal vertebrae, you can see, is separated by what's known as a cartilage. Here in the ankylosing spondylitis, there's a chronic inflammatory process which leads to fusion. Can you see the fusion here where the mouse is pointing? There's a fusion of the vertebrae. So therefore, basically, you end up becoming more rigid and more, you have less mobility and less range of motion in certain planes. Hence why there is a limited range of motion in the lumbar spine and both frontal and sagittal plane, which would then lead to an image like this, where you have more curvature of the spine, and there's slight bending or a postural difference. Now, the main characteristics that I want you to take away from this video, what you will see in a clinic of a patient presenting with ankylosing spondylitis, is males are more commonly affected, whereas in rheumatoid arthritis, females are more commonly affected. There is a low back pain inflammatory process and usually early morning stiffness, more than one hour. So when you wake up, there is usually stiffness. But as you go throughout the day, the pain usually gets uh, better because of as you start moving and as you start uh, exercising, the pain uh, goes away. There's usually nocturnal, i.e. discomfort during night, and the pain usually improves after exercise. On x-ray, the first thing that you would possibly see is bilateral sacroiliitis. What are the diagnostic changes and what do you see on x-ray? So you can see there's sclerosis of the sacroiliac joint. And there's the main two ones, which I have highlighted for you to know, is in green arrows. There is pseudo-widening of the SIJ joints due to erosions, which you can see here. There is a pseudo-widening. Usually this, the sacroiliac joint is not this wide. They're quite compactly close together. But here on this image, you can see there's widening. And the spinal region, i.e. the cervical, uh, mainly affects the thoracic and the lumbar region. So here we can see the lumbar region. There is usually fusion of the vertebrae which leads to something known as a bamboo spine. If you guys know what a bamboo stick looks like, which is found predominantly um, pandas eat bamboo or you just find in the eastern countries in the world, you will know the bamboo is like a very straight firm stick. Um, so your spine ends up becoming something like a bamboo spine which is seen more commonly on the x-ray. There's also ankylosis, i.e. fusion of the sacroiliac joint. Now the key changes in ankylosing spondylitis is when you can find in um, x-rays is something known as syndesmophytes. Syndesmophytes are basically slight bony growths, bony growth which uh, protrudes outwards during the fusion. So how do, you, how do you confirm the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis from a patient history is the main thing. 
usually when a patient comes into your clinic and they and you ask them about patient history they usually complain of back pain for more than three months continuously which gets worsened during the evening and towards the night and they are most most often seen to complain of pain during night time where they cannot sleep where they cannot um, usually um, have any sort of rest at night because of the pain there's also pain and stiffness in the chest region there is very rarely nowadays is usually involved with cycloruritis which basically means inflammation of the um, arthritis of the eye now that this is more commonly found in both reactive arthritis and rate uh, Leroy syndrome which is mentioned in a different video on my channel so you you can find that videos now the clinical criteria uh, which was uh, made in Rome in 1961 said that First of all, in order to diagnose a patient with ankylosing spondylitis, you either need four of these criteria, which are up on the screen now, plus a diagnostic one, at least one diagnostic imaging technique. So let's run through the um, main type of criteria that they had mentioned. So the Rome 1961 classification usually included lumbosacral pain and stiffness for at least three months, not improving at rest, but improving during exercise and throughout the day. There's usually pain and uh, stiffness throughout the thoracic spine, limited chest movement, limited motility and mobility in the lumbar spine, and there's bilateral sacroiliitis. Bilateral sacroiliitis is far, by far the most important one and the most important uh, clinical um, criteria that you would most often see in the clinic due in it when you t uh, perform an x-ray and syndesmophytes. So if your patient complains from your patient history, they say they have low back pain for certain period of time which is greater than three months persistent during rest and worsens at night but gets better during the morning then with these other things and at least one other diagnostic criteria i.e. an x-ray change you can diagnose a patient with ankylosing spondylitis compared to osteoarthritis which is also mentioned in a different video the complications of ankylosing spondylitis usually include lung apical fibrosis because of the limited chest expansion uh, your muscles and expiratory muscles are not working there so therefore it eventually undergo fibrotic changes within the lung and there could also be aortic regurgitation. Now what are the treatments? The main types of treatments include physiotherapy, NSAIDs to control the pain and stiffness and DMODs. Uh, these are very important especially acetoprene and met metatroxate. Metatroxate is probably the most common, commonly used and salicylphurin. There's also another drug uh, uh, category called the TNF-alpha receptor blockers, known as Enterocept, but the most commonly used. So during, if someone is in stage one of ankylosing spondylitis, i.e. they have very minimal stiffness, but usually complains of stiffness for, you know, approximately three months, you should preferably start them with physiotherapy and control the pain by giving them NSAIDs. If it was stage two, i.e. they you know, it's been more than three months and the uh, on the x-ray you come back with a bamboo spine, severe sclerosis of the SIG joints and you have super, uh, massive pseudo widening and uh, severe bilateral sacroiliitis, then you can preferably start them with physiotherapy, NSAID and add a, a DMOD, usually methotrexate is probably the common one used. So that concludes the video. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Hopefully um, you understand everything about ankylosing spondylitis. It's very simple um, to diagnose in the rheumatology department. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe, share and like.